two girls were battling their driving skills, when suddenly, tens of tons of oil gushed out from underground. The car got completely stuck in the pit. When firefighters arrived, they found the girl in the passenger seat, stabbed in the chest with a pen. She was pale, struggling to breathe. While they were discussing a plan, she suddenly coughed up blood, and the pen came out. The firefighters endured the pain of the oil onslaught, and pushed the car to the edge of the hole, temporarily stopping the oil gush. They then proceeded to rescue the girls one by one. It was at the moment, when everyone was evacuated. The man's head got stuck in the windshield, the pain kept him convulsing. On the other side, the girl who got hit wasn't doing any better. Her entire right leg twisted at a 90 degree angle, but the firefighters still chose to rescue the man first. They used firefighting suits to protect his head, took out a power drill and began cutting the glass. The glass was successfully cut into two halves. Clear! It's clear! The man put on a neck brace and was taken to the hospital. On the way, he still didn't forget to ask about the girl's condition. To stabilize her leg, the firefighter directly used her hands to twist the girl's leg into position. Lift it. The boy fell into the barn, in big trouble. Rescuers rushed in quickly. Firefighters climbed in from the top with a ladder. They put a board under their feet for more support. They approached the boy, put a rescue collar around his armpits, and put up barriers around him. Then they used a vacuum to suck out the corn around him. Suddenly, Julia's safety rope broke. She started sinking with the flowing corn. Jack ignored the danger, untied his safety rope, and tried to pull her out. But both of them sank together. Alex quickly told the firefighters outside to cut the barn wall. He told the boy to take a deep breath and release the protection under the armpits. As the barn was cut open, the boy took a big breath, grain gushed out. All three were successfully rescued. A man, being greedy, accidentally fell into a chocolate pot. When the rescue team arrived, only his face was sticking out. The pot kept heating up. They quickly set up a ladder on the pot. Two guys pulled the man with all their might. But suddenly, there was a strong suction from below, almost pulling them in too. Just as the man got an oxygen tube, he was sucked back in. The leader brought cocoa butter and poured it into the pot. With constant stirring, the chocolate began to thin. The man was easily pulled out. After the ordeal, the man said he still loved chocolate a lot. The hot girl just sneezed, unexpectedly spraying out two worms, which frightened her friend into calling 911. Soon the rescue team arrived. What they witnessed made them feel nauseous. The woman, terrified, kept pleading for help. The doctor calmed her down and let her lie on a chair. Then, she used tweezers to pull out the worms, diagnosing it as an roundworm infection, which caused by consuming contaminated food. However, the woman insisted she only ate organic food. The doctor emphasized organic doesn't necessarily mean clean. As roundworms are transmitted through feces, the woman struggled to catch her breath upon hearing this. The doctor quickly inserted a tube into the woman's mouth. Worms kept getting sucked out from her mouth, quickly filling up a small bag. The woman was then taken to the hospital. The performer suddenly fell, then four fingers were cut off by ice skates. The girl, scared, fell down. Her ice skate pierced into her companion's chest. And all of this, just because one sequin, the boss quickly called 911. But the boy's condition was very bad. The skate penetrated his chest five centimeters. Although it didn't hit the heart, it couldn't be pulled out directly. They had to carefully take the girl's foot out of the skate, then send the boy to the hospital. Have you ever been cut by an ice skate? <laughs> Just moments ago, the girl called 911, saying she was alone at home, and someone was trying to break in. The 911 operator comforted her, asking her to hide and provide information, while dispatching police to check the situation. The girl, ignoring advice, attempted to sneak out, and was caught by the robber on the spot. The operator, quick-witted, shouted the robber's name loudly over the phone. Peter! Petey! 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 She warned him. I need to explain something to you about this emergency. This emergency is yours. I have dispatched the police to your exact location. I know exactly what road they're going to go down. I know what door they're going to walk into, and I am prepared to help you escape. The robber confused but agreed. After locking the girl in the room, he followed the operator's instructions and escaped through the back door, only to be intercepted by the female police officer, who had just arrived. The woman died in the pool, but the murderer was nowhere to be found. The police found some letters on the table, but none were signed by the woman. So they found the woman liked to snoop on other people's mail. 
After asking the neighbors, the police found out the woman liked to cause trouble. When the kid set up a stand, she reported the child for operating without a permit. She didn't like the neighbor's dog, so she poisoned the bread for the dog. The neighbors all disliked her. In the end, the police found out on the day of the incident, the woman was sprayed with water by a kid. She grabbed the gun, but was interrupted by someone barging in. She tripped during the chase, accidentally shot herself. Just as the detectives were thinking about who broke in, a corgi crawled in through the doggy door. Now, they know who the culprit is. Do you think this woman got what she deserved? A snake is slowly crawling towards a baby. Unaware, the baby keeps shaking his rattle. Meanwhile, his parents are out on a date. The worried mother checks the monitor and sees the snake. Terrified, the father immediately dials 911. Firefighters rush in, breaking open the door. Following the cries, they locate the baby, spotting the snake. The woman quickly traps it in a box. Meanwhile, the parents rush back. The blackie notices clothes on the floor, curious about where the babysitter went. Where's your laundry? The basement. They head to the basement. Shocked by what they see, the babysitter is surrounded by snakes. She's bitten and collapses. Firefighters rush for equipment. Then they use dry ice fire extinguishers to freeze the snake. Seizing the opportunity, they carry away the babysitter. The guy locked himself in a safe, but his girlfriend found it hilarious. Because a tornado just hit, the guy left his girlfriend behind. Hid in the safe himself, but accidentally locked himself in. His girlfriend called 911. The cops told her to try his birthday, but the safe belonged to his parents, and he didn't know their birthdays, so the cops had to dig up the info and told the girl. But even after trying, it didn't work, so she searched the room for clues, finally finding a football signed by Kobe on the table. With the operator's hint, she entered 0823, and it opened the safe. Do you know why? Be careful if there is a camera in the child's room. Play. The girl hears and immediately gets up. Following the instructions of the mysterious person, she finds the gift, matches and gasoline. Soon after, the house catches fire. Firefighters rush to rescue the unconscious parents on the second floor, but can't find the little girl anywhere. Eventually, for the safety of the firefighters, the captain orders an evacuation. Do you know who this mysterious person is? It turns out the mysterious person is the family's former nanny. She wanted to become the girl's mother, so she manipulated the girl into setting fire to her own home. I'm going to be your mommy now. Frightening the girl into silence, just then, the captain arrived, subdued the nanny, and successfully rescued the girl. The baby in the back seat looked totally pale and lifeless, yet when questioned by the lady cop, the mother insisted the baby was fine. However, her nervous demeanor and blood-stained hands made the lady sense something was off. She immediately ordered the woman out of the car, slapped handcuffs on her, and called for backup. Soon, the rescue team arrived, rushing the baby to the hospital for urgent treatment. The team medic found the baby had been born less than an hour ago. The umbilical cord hadn't even been properly cleaned. In the car's trunk, the team found a fake pregnant belly. The woman wasn't the baby's mother after all, but she stubbornly refused to admit it. Where was the real mother of the child. Meanwhile, the operator received a distress call. A woman reported someone had cut open her belly, taken her baby, and left her trapped in a dark space. Before the operator could inquire further, the woman fainted due to excessive bleeding, and the call got disconnected. Thankfully, the emergency system traced the woman's approximate location, leading to the discovery of the woman locked in the trunk of a car. The man was sinking in mud and was almost done for, but he still couldn't resist trying to steal his buddy's girl. I love you. And the plot thickens. But you've been a total jerk to me. The three of us living under one roof. You two kissing and canoodling. It was killing me. Just moments ago, the man accidentally fell into the mud, blaming his friend for bringing him here. As he kept yammering, he sank even deeper. The rescue team warned him not to move, but by then, the man was having trouble breathing. So, he made a bold move and confessed his feelings to his friend's girlfriend. The girl was taken aback, but to encourage the man. I love you too, Dylan. What? The man's spirits lifted upon hearing this. With the support of the iron framework, he slowly managed to crawl out bit by bit. Oh,